Hey everyone, Nevkex here, and welcome to our first promotion game of Season 3. We have hit uh, the top of Diamond 3 and are trying in this game to promote up to Diamond 2. Um, so, you know what, I, I kind of thought I would take a, a longer break from YouTube for Christmas. Uh, this I'm recording this on the, the evening of the 23rd. I just happen to actually have most of today free, whereas I'm going to be busy for so many of the other days over Christmas. And I said, you know what? Just to give an extra day worth of, of sort of games to you guys while I might not be here to be able to record. Could be pretty fun actually to do the di uh, the Diamond 3 promo game. I thought that would be a, actually kind of a fun idea. So, you know, either when we pick things up after Christmas, we either go in to it basically going like, Hey, we're Diamond 2 now, let's push forward from Diamond 2 after Christmas. Or we say, you know, hey, we, we didn't get up to Diamond 2 but let's go and let's get there now after Christmas. I thought, you know, that's actually that's a pretty good narrative either way. So so let's go for it. Um, I think I'm also planning, I haven't made it yet, but I, uh, if it looks good, I am planning to, for these promo games, to keep the heroes that I pick uh, much more secretive, to literally have the promo game be totally focused on actual good picks and uh, things like that. We banned out Thrall, which I think is a really, really good ban. Uh, then every team actually bans out Brightwing, which is kind of unusual. Uh, they, okay, so they're just trying to do a support lock here on us. They're going to grab Malfurion for themselves after buying that Brightwing. They're certainly scared for about, uh, they're certainly scared, I guess, about the global presence of Brightwing on this map. I don't know if it's exactly tying into some sort of strategy that they have. It's certainly a good map for her, though. No doubt about that. So she's a reasonable enough ban. <laughs> See, we're going for a really unusual team comp. No question about it. I love the Zeratul first pick. I think it's amazing. Uh, after Thrall, I think it's really fantastic. And we grab Asmodan Ragnaros. Uh, so we have... And then our final two picks here, right, are going to be a warrior and a support. So we're going to have... Two melee assassins and then a specialist. It's a really bizarre composition that we've got going here. Uh, we lack any kind of, we lack any kind of sustained range damage. That's like consistent sustained range damage. I mean, Asmodan does his his burst every now and then. We don't have something like a, a Rainer or a Vala that can put out even Li Ming, who's actually quite sustained for a burst mage. Um, we don't have any heroes that can put out sort of sustained damage uh, range, kind of guarantee to get it to work. Uh, anyway, the enemy team does ban out ETC. We ban out the Diablo, so that's a bit of a uh, warrior lock coming out here. I like both of those bans quite a lot. I think they probably would be, for me, the two standout warriors on this particular map. The ones I'd be looking into grabbing most of all. The enemy team grabs Dehaka and they go for Taika. So they've got a very standard composition so far, as opposed to ours, which is a very unusual one. Basically, they've got... They've got a strong solo lane, second warrior in Dahaka. They've got strong sort of burst damage at range with Li Ming, strong sustain damage with Tychus, and then a solo healer. We grab Morales and Muradin. I think Morales isn't terrible. The enemy team actually grabbed the Butcher as their final pick. So, you know, I said they had a dead standard draft. This totally mixes things up and, uh, yeah, throws a bit of a wrench in things. Certainly, it's going to make this a pretty intriguing game. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Gasmodan. I presume that he only picks Gaslo and Asmodan. It seems, yeah, pretty clear, pretty clear. Um, see, like, I, I probably uh, would have preferred to switch out the Ragnaros for some sort of sustained range damage. Like a Tychus for us would have been just great. Uh, just to have a bit more consistency. So I was, um, I, I, I'm going to be very careful not to give away anything in the draft things. Uh, but, you know... It's one of those funny things, like uh, people are saying, well, you always know that you're grumpy about the game because you, you give out about your draft. Uh, that means you're going to lose. I'm like, well, often it does, right? If you've got a worse draft, you do lose. That's the way it usually works. It's so, so, so important. Uh, and our draft, you got to be honest, it's pretty dodgy here. Uh, but the enemy team, by picking up the Butcher, definitely mixing it up too. Uh, and again, I think a bit of a dodgy way. Certainly the Butcher pick is intended to sort of counter what we're doing. And we don't necessarily have a lot of stuff to focus down the Butcher. Um, but it means that they are running a solo warrior to Hakka. Uh, as opposed to, let's say, Johanna would have fit in quite notably there. And uh, would have worked pretty well. Um, got some interesting choices for what to pick here at level 1. Block would obviously be lovely against the Butcher, but then it's no good against Tychus, who shreds through it in like half a second. Uh, third Wind wouldn't be awful either, but then again, Morales is pretty good at 
at providing that. So in this game, I do actually ultimately opt into Perfect Storm. I said, you know what? You know what? If the Butcher dives us, let's say he just decides, hey, I'm going to dive Asmodan or I'm going to dive Ragnaros. Uh, what do we have to stop him? You know, if Asmodan's uh, orb misses or his laser gets interrupted or if Seratul is busy elsewhere, you know, we don't have much actual focus down burst type damage. So this could be kind of difficult. <laughs> um, so I said, you know what? I'm going to go for the perfect storm. Just a bit of extra like focus damage on my Q and a bit more mana sustain as well, right? Because between our trait and between Morales, we'll have a lot of health sustain, but we won't have much mana sustain. I'm trying to zone out this Malfurion who might be looking to come in here. Ragnaros fighting against the Butcher. Morales barely able to keep him alive through that as well. Asmodan is pinging stuff because of something. Uh, I was kind of wondering at the start, what is he saying? Like, is he reading out dates or something? What is this? What is 425? Uh, it was, it's actually stacks. <laughs> it's actually stacks. Uh, I think Morales is talking to the Ragnaros. He's saying like, oh yeah, if you're in trouble, run towards me so I can start healing you as soon as possible. I can knock the enemy team away if necessary. I mean, we knew Li Ming was going to be coming in and uh, completely whiffed our Storm Bolt. Something to note actually during this game, you guys will notice it, is that I start having some really, really bad lag. Uh, and not just like what I'm talking about, like visual lag, like my graphics card or processor kind of uh, sees up a little bit. Ragnar was going super deep for, I don't really know why. It wasn't the best situation for burst damage. I'm trying to jump back here and zone these guys out as much as I can. I go for the Q. Unfortunately, uh, the Butcher doesn't walk forwards anymore, so we don't actually hit him, but that's all right. I think these two I, I for certain missed, but uh, I'm obviously not going to be able to tell you which ones I miss because of lag and which ones I don't. I mean, I suppose you could just check out another Murden gameplay that I've had. And um, just get a feel for how many I typically hit, how many I typically miss. See, so we're trying to body block this uh, this dude a little bit. We only want to hit him like just enough to kill him and escape. Actually, with uh, Morales, we were sustaining through that pretty well, so it wasn't a big deal. But um, yeah, that was kind of was cool. We wanted to body block him as efficiently as possible, and it actually just about worked out perfectly. We got the final basic attack on him, and we're able to dwarf toss away. Uh, so pretty happy with how that went. First tribute does spawn, and it's going to be up towards the top. And grab that regen globe from Morales. Won't really make much difference. And level four gonna pick up Thunder Burn, making Thunderclap strike a second time, just to give some more zoning uh, and some more sort of consistent uh, control for uh, our teammates here. Gonna clock the old Ahaka with a Q as we run away. Dwarf toss over him. He cannot follow us. And uh, yeah, nice little Q. Just get one stack more. We're up to five stacks on that. I'm looking here for a bit of a sneaky flank. We can obviously dwarf toss over these walls. So, you know, we're just looking to remove this guy from the fight for the time being. We see that Ragnaros is going really low, so we're going to come in and try back him up as much as we can. Ooh, almost goes down to the Leeming Q's plus at uh, the dive from uh, from the Butcher. I try to save Morales, but it just doesn't work out. Unfortunately, us actually standing in front of her and body blocking for her meant that the Leeming Orb Explosion did pick her off. So that was kind of unfortunate. The enemy team is getting a pretty nice channel on here, but myself and Zeratul Leeming goes too far forward. We catch her with the Q, then the Zeratul early game damage. She just gets absolutely wrecked. Now, once again, we've got Dwarf Toss, so we can afford to kind of drag these guys away. Just going to save this, and there you go. That very visibly, like I said, I was having a lot of lag in this game. An awful lot of lag, so if I do do some things that look really fucking stupid, that's why. Uh, like, I just fire off an ability into the middle of nowhere. There were a couple of times where I pressed the button and it, it literally did not happen until, you know, half a second to a second later on. So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, really. So you just have to go, well, you know what? It sucks, man. It sucks. Jumping on this Tychus. Uh, Li Ming, though, is there to back him up. Dehaka no Zed, says Asmodan, as Dehaka pops his Zed and arrives in the fight, I think. We might have said that a little bit earlier. But Dehaka Zed was certainly nearer to being off cooldown than he expected. We hit the Tychus with the Q. We had that ready. And trying to just skate stuff and get some zoning in. We'd love to throw down a W to try to protect Morales, but she's just going to die no matter what. We don't even have the mana for the W. Uh, Ragnaros goes down as well with the Li Ming resets. <laughs> okay, I was wrong, says Gasodan. To be fair, you know, it, it's not a, a huge mistake to make. I think that fight was ultimately going badly for us anyway. And it looks like Asmodan actually did get some pretty decent structural damage uh, with his split push down the bottom. And I'm not totally opposed to, you know, just stalling out a tribute while Asmodan uh, does push. Like, it went pretty well for us. He's had 11 out of 25 sacks too, so that's good. 
But I mean, he got some he got some pretty good damage down. We killed Li Ming. Uh, Ragnaros with his trait was able to stall that tribute for like a about 18 seconds or so. How long does it last? Something like that. I don't know, 12 seconds? Not sure. Anyway, we uh this Tychus is going super ham. We're gonna dwarf toss away. I was considering whether to save the health or the mana. Which one matters more? Hoping this Tychus would come in, but this Tychus is actually pretty smart. He just has his spidey senses were tingling and he just runs away as Zeratul is coming up. I was super low and he'd been going super ham. So yeah, just good game sense from him, I guess. Or maybe they spot a rotation or something. I don't know precisely. And I dwarf toss over here, which actually doesn't work out too well. And fuck up that Q. I think that one was just a fuck up, to be honest with you. <laughs> just gonna hit this to hack a little bit. Waiting for the team to arrive. Get my Fury in with a stun, which is mildly useful. And Zeratul is moving in. Zeratul hopefully going to finish. Oh, wait, all three man route. That's pretty brutal. We catch Tychus with a Q, but unfortunately, the uh, Butcher's Q, I think, finishes off Zeratul right there. Trying to save him as best as we could. We're focusing here on uh, the Butcher, just trying to slow him down. Dwarf tossing forwards, trying to get a slow onto the Dahaka as well. Just doing as much as we can to try to save Morales, but she's not going to live. We catch the Butcher in another stun. Uh, and then I was just kind of dead uh, without mana. I thought I had enough mana to dwarf toss. I just kind of fucked up. Ragnaros had not been there for that fight, unfortunately. Uh, though the Li Ming wasn't there either. It sort of cancels itself out. <laughs> the hacker, he is just chilling, man. He is just chilling. He's confident he can 1v1 this rag. And looks like he almost can. Luckily, the teammates do arrive. So it ends up actually being a good bait for the rag. Zeratul goes in, but just like... Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the Dahaka bait didn't work out too well. The Ragnaros bait didn't work that well either. Uh, Gazmodan is, uh, yeah, he's he's being nice. So we're gonna we're gonna report him. This is another one of my new uh, resolutions. Uh, since because someone pointed it out in one of the last videos as well, was that hey Nupkex, like you're 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 calling people out for being. Uh, you know, abusive in the chat, but you're not actually remembering to report them. And I was there and saying, like, yeah, actually, you're completely right. Kind of discussed that in the previous video as well. But uh, definitely in this video, I was kind of saying, yep, yeah, this guy, he's been pretty toxic. Got to be honest with you. Uh, I think he, you know, he deserves a bit of a report. He's just, he's just kind of unnecessarily being a bit of a douche. Slow these guys down so Asmodan can hit his Q. Does some decent damage. We can afford to take some hits because of our trait. Morales is at full mana too. It wasn't a big deal. Kind of noticed they were pushing in down the bottom and rotate down. But Ragnaros is already dead. The enemy team, by the way, is level 11 to level 9 at this stage. We're about to hit 10 though. Uh, that was lag. I remember that one in particular. I hit Q about five seconds before it actually fired off is what it felt like. This is probably a bait from Dahaka. He knows that we can interrupt him. He's probably trying to drag me into the fort, get some good damage down. Not sure. We get Li Ming with the Q, which is nice. Hit her a few basic attacks. Nothing too impressive, really. But another Q stack is nothing to sneeze at. We're up to 20 right now. Another huge lag spike. Uh, you can see I'm kind of shaking the screen a bit, trying to get a feel for this lag. Like, is it consistent or what's happening? Is anything in particular triggering it? Uh, we're kind of in a funky position right here where we're zoning a couple of heroes out from the tribute. Li Ming actually popping her heroic to scout things out. Just kind of being a bit scared, a bit nervous. The hacker isn't here either. Uh, Li Ming's on half mana. Gonna break down this uh, wall. <laughs> and again, the lag is unbelievable. The hacker, uh, Ragnar takes a big chunk of damage. Even more lag spikes in this. It doesn't seem to be anything I can control. And it's making it really difficult to actually get a sense for these fights. To get a sense of where we should position in this. I do pop Avatar early to try to save myself some life. Uh, of course, that does mean Tychus' minigun will do more damage. But I decided it would probably be worth it overall. With the hacker dead, we can push in here. Maybe make something happen. Tychus has popped uh, Odin though. So that's something to watch out for. A good uh, VP actually comes out and prevents them from continuing the chase as we are all low my trait is doing some work in healing me up we definitely need to be careful right here a good q uh here and we're going to be able to chase down the butcher unfortunately the q misses hit him with the w but if i hit q on the butcher he would have been dead luckily we do pick him off thanks to nice moves from the zerts so using the vorpal blade to get back in on top but could have been better if i had aimed that better uh, i tried to dwarf toss over unfortunately the dwarf toss gets instantly interrupted by a tychus grenade he didn't mean to do that but i'm sure he was more than happy to take that anyway i'm gonna attempt to body block any magic missiles coming from li ming and we do in fact body block them preventing them from hitting morales throw out a q saving zeratul hit the tychus with a w as well just to slow him down push him away he's chasing me with a minigun i was considering going back in and putting some pressure on but our teammates are pinging on the boss what i'm gonna do is i could help the boss out i decide though you know what i'm gonna be really sneaky here the hack is top i'm gonna try disguise this again this is something i love to do i'm just trying to call my, uh the bluff here of the enemy team to say like okay my teammates have hearthstone 
Uh, I'm going to go down here. You see, Tychus does come and scout it out. He got a bit suspicious after not seeing anyone else. So I'm going to come in here. Uh, a little bit of lag once again, missing that, which is unfortunate, not adjusting my aim uh, properly on time. I'm going to chase these guys pretty aggressively. Get a nice stun on this guy. Beautiful Sulfurous Smash comes in. We're going to hit Tychus a few times with basic attack, and the Meteor is enough to finish him off. Morales is ready to use many back dropship as well. And we're able to get out of here. Again, they didn't really need me to tank for the uh, the boss because we got a Morales. He kind of does that. I actually thought, it's interesting. I thought this was a good opportunity for Morales to Hearthstone. And then to bring me and the teammates who also Hearthstoned up to the Tribute. Instead, she decides to stick around the lane a bit and then made it back up. But I thought, you know, probably a little bit more efficient for her to Hearthstone and then do that. She come in with more mana. Now, it's not too important, but that was a little thing I was kind of wondering at that stage. Zerto wants to capture the boss. I think this is pretty risky, but we might be able to go for it. We got Asmodan laser, so we should burn through this pretty fast. Taka attempted to come in to interrupt. Now, the enemy, uh, the other boss is dead, so the enemy team fully knows what we're doing and is on the way. Uh, the Butcher lands a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, VP comes out, but only to stop the Butcher. Tychus is still doing damage. We still have lag. Get silenced before we can land our W to heal ourselves with the healing static. We've moved into the enemy team with the intention of doing that, and we go down as well. Zeratul is also dead, and that is a free boss for the enemy team. Honestly, I think it was a bad call. Uh, I, I, I think Zeratul th thought that the R boss down bottom was going to draw their attention for longer, uh, but it gave... it. The other boss went down too quickly. It gave the enemy team too much time to actually get up and interrupt us. We didn't take that boss down quickly enough. And uh, it was a well-executed dive by them. Very well-executed dive. I think... I also would say it, probably the VP could have been used better to zone out more members of the enemy team. I think we had enough CC to deal with uh, the, the Butcher. I think we needed a multi-person VP to pull that off. Huge lag spike once again, interrupting. It's looking pretty bad. We're like uh, level 15, almost 16 to... Well, it's probably going to be 16 to 14, which is a talent tier and two levels down, which is pretty rough. Uh, myself and Zeratul are defending this fort. Use a W here to get a bit of healing. Slow down. The Butcher can hit him with a Q. Just do some damage. Uh, Zeratul doing what he can, but he's taking a few too many hits. Looks like Morales is looking for a bit of a crazy flank right here, which is kind of interesting. The Butcher, unfortunately, does pick him off. Li Ming arrives as well, so got a Dwarf Toss out of here. Uh, the uh, ooh, If you look at the minimap, you can see a flank happening with Ragnaros and Morales from behind the enemy team, but they're not in position to actually make it happen. If they positioned it a little bit closer, perhaps they could have made it work. I don't know. It's a bit of bad luck. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, though. The enemy team did play that well. Uh, and... Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. A nice empowered Q from uh, Asmodan does do some nice damage to the enemy team. Attempt to hit the Butcher with our Q. Unfortunately, does not land. And then that is a nice combo from the enemy team. Asmodan going a bit too far forwards. Getting caught out. Gets pulled back and picked off. We're just going to try slow these da guys down as much as we can. The Butcher obviously being the number one priority. Don't want to get caught ourselves. Zeratul gets a nice flank off. Huge Sulfira Smash comes in. And does gigantic damage. Malfurion blows up. We're on Li Ming as well. Li Ming goes down. We dive her. Meanwhile, Morales is also getting dove upon. Uh, try to hit the Butcher with the Q. But we hit uh, Dahaka. But we've got a big Ragnaros. Who gets a beautiful stun. I'm going to Dwarf Toss in front of this Dahaka. Try slow him down. Hit him with the W. Gonna hit him with a Q as well. And there we go. A couple of basic attacks and he goes down as well. I think he did pick up Adaptation. But that was really nice. Enemy team getting too greedy. The power, like, Sophia Smash. I'm actually very impressed with this Heroic. It's better than I thought. And this Ragnaros is good at using it. So, actually, you know, the, the aspect of Ragnaros I've been kind of least excited about, honestly, or at least kind of... I thought it wouldn't be as good. It's number one, the E-Build, and number two, Sophia Smash. They're both proving to be incredibly effective here. Um, obviously, level 16 is a massive spike for that E build because he gets a second E for free every time he casts one. Uh, uh, clearly, Asmodan is flaming the team like fuck. Like fuck. <laughs> As you can tell, these guys are saying, is he for real? Seeing as no one's saying anything, I think it's safe to assume that the dude that we silenced was the guy that is doing it. <laughs> Rekro says, I should have to... So, yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. I'm going to come in here, take this vision away, kind of create a bit of pressure. That Merc Camp in the middle is doing some work too. We were unlucky that the boss didn't respawn at a good time for when we got that nice little sort of team wipe. Great VP from Zeratul. We're going to come in here and try to pick these guys off. Going to move in, get the W down, throw down a Q. We actually hit the Butcher, which is just fine, actually. I'm actually more than happy to kill the Butcher instead of Tychus. And aiming for the Tychus, but Tychus dashes away. We catch the Butcher, and... Uh, the teammates do a similar thing. Using my Q there, the Stormbolt, to just finish off that tower. Get a little bit of extra XP for us. 
And this is a good position. With the Butcher's dead for 40 seconds, we can start making things happen around the map. Should put us in a good spot as well for the next tribute too. The boss has respawned, so we're thinking this could be a good boss moment. Gonna hop into the medivac right here. And zoom on down. Dehaka is doing a good job split pushing up top, getting nice XP for his team. Uh, getting nice vision along the map as well. I'm going to create some structural pressure too. Uh, he's actually going to create quite a big push. Which is something to definitely, definitely watch out for. I'm keeping my cooldowns this time. I want to save them, not use them against the boss. I want to keep them for uh, the enemy team trying anything funny. Li Ming is in mid. Taika is in mid as well. Dehaka is still there. So I'm thinking like we can do this. Going to ping here. We could probably pick up this Malfurion kill. And someone needs to go back and defend as well. Beautiful work by Zeratul. Beautiful W. Malfurion lands uh, a root, but we land a stun as well with our Q. And that allows Ragnaros with a very well aimed Sulfurous Smash once again to pick up the kill on Malfurion. That's a 56 second death timer. That's a big deal. We're going to have a very powerful curse right now. This is going to be a boss pushing during a curse with Malfurion dead. The enemy team also doesn't have level 20 yet. I'm going to come in here. This helps soak up this wave. There we go. Pretty nice. I'm going to make our way down towards the boss. We can run through the enemy forts because they are disabled thanks to the curse. But considering what's the best way to get there, I decided just a normal sort of walk would be just fine. Ragnaros doing massive damage, though he does go down. The Butcher self-healing, taking him by surprise. We get caught in Lamb to the Slaughter, but better me than anyone else. Not a big deal at all. Uh, Dehaka is coming in from behind, so we're going to try zone uh, out for that. Do some damage to him. Tychus pops Odin, but we are on top of him. We got to give him the axe damage. We're focusing him down. We got our Q as well. We hit the hacker with the Q, actually, but we focus down the, uh, the uh, Tychus, excuse me, with the basic attacks. The hacker goes down as well. He's got no escapes. The big weakness of the hacker, of course. Four heroes dead. Malfurion respawns, but it's too late. Getting picked off there. Did not work out well for him. Did not work out well for him. We're going to use... Uh, uh, Give him the axe to get a bit of extra damage. It's not necessary, but just a bit of min-maxing that we can try for fun. Why the heck not? I'm going to Storm Belt the core and finish it off with a basic attack. Pretty nice. Seratul saying he played early like trash. He didn't play too bad at all, I thought. I think he did pretty well in this game. I, I thought our Seratul was very nice. And I love the Seratul first pick. I think it's really impactful. We actually grabbed MVP in this game. Again, I don't think I played particularly well. I thought on top of like some bad aim just in general, we also had a bunch of bad aim and bad positioning and stuff happening because of lag. So, uh, yeah, but happy to take the win in the end. I Honestly, I really wasn't impressed with our draft. I thought we were probably going to be screwed, uh, but we managed to pull it out. Managed to pull it out. 292 ranked points. Not too shabby. Had a few bank points, plus a nice personal adjustment. There are the stats. We tanked up a lot. We did a fair chunk of damage ourselves. We did as much hero damage as the Ragnaros, actually, I think. Perfect Storm, Thunder Burn, Iron Forge Momentum, Avatar, Healing Static, Give him the axe. And I picked up hardened shields at the end just to help dive that core. It wasn't really important at that stage. But anyway, there you go. Got a few more takedowns than average players at the level as well, which is always nice. And uh, yeah, solidly into Diamond 2. Eight wins, five losses. We've kind of uh, made a bunch of... We've actually just since... Uh, since uh, we finished those placement games, we've had three wins and got MVP three times. We've been on fire. Even though I felt like, honestly, I made some mechanical misplays in nearly all of the games. Fat fingering a few things and then lag on this one. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm going to very, very, very happily take that particular win. And also happy in this game that, you know, we did our duty in, in reporting that Asmodan. And uh, then, yeah, from what our teammates were saying, kind of vindicated that choice then later into the draft as well. Um... But yeah, just in terms of the talents, very, very standard Muradin stuff. I explained the early stuff. The rest is, is relatively straightforward. Went for giving the axe at 16 in this case. Uh, again, just to have some some power, some extra damage uh, from Muradin, some damage I put to deal with the Butcher Dives, or to focus one of these heroes down. You know, it lets, allows us to go aggressive with Zeratul and pick people off, or allows us to put out a lot of damage while we defend Morales. I thought that'd be a nice choice. And I think it worked out. Pretty well, all things considered. Pretty well, yeah. I mean, we did 33,000 hero damage. Uh, Ragnaros did 34,000. Asphodan did 39,000. You know, Zeratul obviously leading the pack with 50,000. Like I said, I, I was impressed with his play overall. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty cool game. Uh, from the perspective of what, like, uh, honestly, I think if they had gone for it, just something simple like Johanna, I think they would have won. Instead of the Butcher as a final pick, just gone for a standard composition. That's why standard comps are standard. I think they're generally better. But they went for the Hacka Solo Warrior and uh, paid the price for it, uh, losing to Double Melee Assassin and Specialist. I mean, Ragnaros is almost a specialist, in, in fact, himself. Funny game, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope you guys had a great Christmas. 
uh, or are having a great Christmas. I don't know when this is coming out. I don't know which days you count as Christmas. Is it the season? Is it the day? I don't know. Give it a thumbs up anyway if you enjoyed the video. And I'll be back real soon with more Heroes of the Storm content. So I will see you all then. Bye-bye.